Hello, everybody. So first things first, uh, a lot of you have gotten back to me since I did my Apple authorized service provider video where I asked uh, people contact me to have interviews done that I would like to make into a short mini documentary. I want to say thank you very much for everybody who reached out to me. And it probably seems like I'm ignoring you. I'm not. I'm getting back to as many of you as I can. Unfortunately, I have a stupid amount of work to do and a lot of business to take care of and a lot of things to, to do that have just been keeping me from doing what I really want to do, which are more videos on Apple. But for now, I will bring you a board repair video on an 8200426 MacBook that's not turning on and not charging. So we're going to go over this MacBook that is not charging. And hopefully, once I go through the entire queue and do all the little things that I want to get settled in my personal life, I will have time to get back to every single one of you that took time out of your day to, to discuss how Apple authorized service providers work with me. I was not expecting to hear back from 200 of you. I thought maybe like five, maybe seven. I got over 200. Between Discord, emails, fresh desk, YouTube messages, I got something close to... Yeah, I, I got about 200 people that contacted me. And this is something that actually requires a staff at this point. I need a staff editor and somebody to help me sift through all this. Just so we are on the same page, I genuinely appreciate that every single one of you took time out of your day to message me back. Thank you very much for that. And I will be getting back to every single one of you as time permits. First thing we're doing is fixing little MacBook. We're going to look at little MacBook right here and just turn my camera a little so you can't see my crotch as much. And we're going to plug in this MacBook and see what's going on with it. Now, when I plug in this MacBook, you'll notice that I have a light in the charger. So PP3V42 is probably present, but it's not turning on. So what we're going to do is figure out why it's not turning on by going to the page that lists the power rails. And on this MacBook, they don't list it in the beginning of the schematic anymore like they used to. They list it in the most intuitive page that you can possibly imagine, which is page 84. And that's what they do here. So as you can see, on page 84 of the schematic, we get the power rails. And the first power rail here is PP bus G3 hot. So it's time to check and see if we're on the proper PP bus. Are you on the PP bus or are you off the PP bus? Hey, <laughs> much, what are you doing? You scared the crap out of me. <laughs> All right. So we have, a new, we have a guest today that's going to be doing a board repair. No, hell have no. a seat. You already know. You, you get the fuck out of here. <laughs> we have a guest today that's going to be fixing a MacBook board. So it looks like PP Bus G3 Hot is 3.54, and it says over here that it's supposed to be 13.05, which is wrong. It's supposed to be 12.56. The schematic gets it wrong again. So let's figure out where it is we'd find that. What creates PP Bus G3 Hot? Let's see how many people pay attention to these streams. What chip am I looking for? U7800. <laughs> no, not U7800. Jesus Christ. OK, let's find. I don't do repairs wow. by profession, but like your streams Marcin inspire is, me to try and solve problems. Thank you. That I like to have in my comment section. Where is that? Where's Marson? Marson Burnham. Oh, can you point? I can't. Oh. Oh, jeez. <laughs> That's a real troll right there. Yeah. <laughs> you know if you do YouTube. All right, we're going to fix this really quickly. But now it's, let's see, U7200. No. I let him hit my, I let him pee pee my bus. What the? What? So I, I think that means they find you attractive. Okay. <laughs> the one that is not working. Is there seriously not a single person in this chat that knows what creates that power rail? Really? Four years? The intern knows what creates this. All right, let's go. So PP bus G3 hot is created by a buck converter controlled by U7100, which allows the charger to go through and then sends 12.6 volts to the system. So let's check out where that is. So that's going to be on the other side of the board over here on the bottom. And let's see if any of you notice if there's anything funny going on over there. Let's see if intern notices if there's anything funny going on over there. Do you know what's wrong with this board, kid? Fuck. My own intern. My own intern is failing me. What? Wait. Look. You have five seconds. Five seconds? Yes. You know what's wrong with this. You've seen it before. Many times. Let's see if chat beats you. What, what's what? going on over here? 
Aaron, two wins. Aaron, two wins. Two resistors are blown. You see the two ones that have the hole in them? Over there and over there. So if we zoom in, two resistors are blown. Now, what are those two for? That's a harder question, so I don't expect you to get that one. Two resistors. Yeah, holy resistor. Let's see. So, what are those two resistors for? R7122 and R7121. This is where the voltage from the charger is going to go through to the system. And right before that, you have this little resistor here. So this what chip... Child labor gets you crusty resistors. Child labor gets you crusty resistors. So <laughs> this over here is going to be the resistor right after the charger enters the system. Now this chip is going to want to know how much voltage, I mean how much current is this entire circuit using. So this can't tell because it's outside the stream. So let's say you wanted to tell how fast the water was moving through a stream. You could put your hands in the stream and you could feel it. And the, the, over here, this resistor is kind of like your hands in the stream. But this chip has no idea what this thing is doing. Because think of this chip kind of like your brain, and this would be kind of like your hands in the stream. So you need a path between those two. And think of these two lines like your arms. So R7122 and R7121 are going to be uh, at the top and the bottom of this resistor. It's going to measure the voltage drop in this resistor, which would be similar to the, uh, how fast the water is moving when you put your hand in a stream. And it's going to report that back to here. Now, if, if these resistors are blown... Wait, that's really corroded? Fuck. This is brand new. Okay, I this is the new headlight for my bike, by the way, entirely separate. But look at how corroded this shit is. Brand new. I paid 20 bucks for that piece of shit. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> fucking piece of shit. If we look at this and we measure these two resistors, the schematic said 10 kilo ohm, I mean 10 ohms, and we get 7,000. So we're supposed to get 10 and we get 7,000. So there you go. So let's replace those. And let's see if this works again. As Daniel just said, same thing over and over again, even though he couldn't guess it. But I haven't seen that board in real life. You'll guess it next time. You were close. I'm not going to guess it. I'm going to check every single one of those. Yep, to current sensing resistors. Very good. All right, we're close. Give the headlight manufacturer some credit. He can solder with the left hand. <laughs> Or he's soldering with the right hand, and he's using, stra he's using the stranger danger. Uh, with the left hand. Need more flux there. have more skills than you think. Amazon Prime is the new China. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. And this chip is probably also likely bad too. As you can see, it doesn't want to come off the board. And the two pins that are Stuck are the pins for current sensing, which just so happens to be what's broken, which is very interesting. But a telltale sign that it's dead. All right, so remove those two. Yoink. Smooth around. <laughs> but it's so much fun. All right. Zoink. That's what they pay for. Okay. Stole everything from it. Stole everything from it. That's what I paid for when I got that headlight. Stole everything from it. Stole everything from it. Daniel, are there any boards here that don't have everything stolen from them already? Stolen from this one? No, this has one of them. Okay, we're almost done here. We just need two pieces, and we're good to go. Okay, maybe this one. I've used all the crap tweezers. I've brought. I've turned them all into crap tweezers. You bought American. Amazon is the one that bought Chinese. Find electronics made in the, the soldering skills are as smooth as their brain. Ouch. Like Alex. <laughs> like Alex. <laughs> oh, that's mean. That yeah, what the, I can't believe you got me to say that. Joshua Hutton said, again, who is the big guy? His name is Ryback. <laughs> He's the big guy. <laughs> All right, this, this, and then 
One more chip. No, don't you run away, you bastard. No. It's on upside down, but that's fine. It'll charge more better that way. Charge more better? More better. That's what AVE would say. Okay. That's harsh. Buy Danish steel can never go wrong. Okay. Need one more chip. Missing. Stolen. Stolen. Who? Hmm? We're actually sending him a MacBook to repair this week. I'm excited to see the job that AVE does fixing a MacBook. Probably better than this shit solder job. AVE soldering of that capacitor was amazing <laughs> on the board that he got with shipping dam. I like how he co he opens the box with a sledgehammer and then calls it shipping damage. That is funny. Okay. Almost done. This chip is soldered on as crooked as my hiring practices. Ugh. Are you still contacting ASP write-ins? Yes, I just, I've gotten over 200 emails. I was responding to a bunch of them at the gym today. Sometimes I respond to them on red lights at bikes. I plan on getting back to every single one of these by next week. It's just I was expecting like six of you, not over 200 of you. I appreciate it, though. That's going to be an amazing little documentary that, that the kid next to me is going to have to edit. We're, we're going to be pulling him out of school. No. I'm half kidding. All right. Oh. You didn't even clean the pads. Yes, I know. I'm a monster. I'm a maniac. Must be I didn't wick for once. Maybe in case Jessa was watching. Jessa gets mad if I'm wicking while she's watching. Thanks for putting out the educational materials you've put out. Been watching a lot of your stuff. And it's helped me put it in the right direction. Awesome. Hi. I'm glad to hear it. Hopefully you made something work. Every time you make something work, it's a middle finger to Tim Cook. All right. Let's see if this thing works. Okay, let's turn off. First thing to do is turn off the 29 volts going to my bike. Because if I put 29 volts to a MacBook, customer will be very unhappy. Yoink. Who has a wig on their head? Eh? Oh. Oh, man. Oh, shit. Let's see. Wait. Oh, what's that? What's that? When you try to cherry pick. Fan spin. Don't six. E. When you've got what you want, but not what you need. Kind of looks like a Batmobile. And it works. So that's it for today. This was nothing but a bad current sensing circuit that was likely shorted to ground by some cheap-ass, shitty knockoff charger. See if I can just go back to the screen and show you. And yeah, so this, yeah, we only use Apple OEM chargers here. We definitely don't use things that we use to charge our bike at the same time to power people's <laughs> machines, because that would be unethical. <laughs> so yeah, so this is the current sensing circuit. This is what allows the U7100, which creates PP bus G3 hot, which is the primary rail from the charger, to tell how much amperage it's using. If it can't tell how much amperage it's using, because there's a too large a difference between pins 4 and 2 and 3 and 1 of this current sense resistor, or pins 27 and 28 of U7100, then it will automatically shut the circuit down as a form of protection, which is one of the few protection circuits in a MacBook that actually works. So that's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something.